your host, Brayden Lloyd. Well, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to broadcast Boston College News, June 1st, 1979. Now, we begin with breaking news out of Nicaragua. According to sources on the ground, rebels representing the Sandinista National Liberation Front have steadily increased violent pressure on leadership in Managua. In what has been dubbed a new attack campaign by the Sandinistas and their supporters against the Nicaraguan government, rebel troops have successfully secured towns within 20 miles of the Managua city limits, and just last week, cut power to the capital itself, causing mass panic. With us, we have Ben Sardinas on the ground in Managua. Good evening, Ben. Can you describe the situation in Managua? Absolutely. The Nicaraguans have become increasingly concerned by escalating violence and a perceived lack of leadership. The number of civilian casualties is on the rise, and some suggest they are being targeted by international forces. Do we know who the forces represent? At this point, we do not know, but expect an international condemnation against any sponsor states. Last week, government forces and the rebels collided at the Battle of Tipitapa. The bloody engagement proceeded to no clear conclusion and resulted in the deaths of most village residents. Wow. Well, stay safe, Ben. We all appreciate the work you're doing. Although it appears the Somoza government may be facing its toughest challenge to date, President Somoza insists that the Nicaraguan National Guard will soon crush the rebel incursion. Washington has remained rather quiet on the issue in the past few weeks, although President Carter has reiterated his support for the Somoza regime. Should the Sandinistas continue to push forward in Nicaragua, President Carter and the U.S. National Security Council will be faced with a difficult decision, whether to continue supporting the Somoza regime and provide additional support, or to engage in dialogue with the Sandinistas. In other news, the long-awaited completion of the second strategic arms limitations talks appear to be within reach. U.S. Secretary of State Cyrus Vance and Soviet Foreign Minister of Affairs Andrei Grimko concluded their meeting in Washington today, and both sides appear optimistic that a treaty will be signed later this month. This is certainly great news for the weary Americans who have grown tired of the stalemate. Certain issues, like the status of the Soviet backfire bomber and U.S. intercontinental cruise missiles, remain unresolved. Nonetheless, the U.S. and Soviet Union hope to establish a meaningful accord when the sides meet in Vienna later this month. Assuming no further issues arrive between the U.S. and Soviet Union to stall negotiations, such as the recent diplomatic controversy over U.S. Sino relations, it appears likely that the U.S.-Soviet summit in Vienna will mark the signing of a new treaty by President Carter and Soviet General Secretary Brezhnev. We'll be right back, but stay tuned for further stories right here on Broadcast Boston College.